Welcome back to the table, everybody. And what we're going to do today is the probably last of the unboxing series of the Storming the Gap Kickstarter. This right here is the World at War 85 Storming the Gap Expansion Pack. It's got three of the expansions and some other stuff in here. Uh, so what exactly is that other stuff? Now, I already started to... I, I cut the plastic already a little bit, easier to rip. I got a little overexcited and ripped more than I had intended, so sorry. <laughs> I wanted to wait so you all could watch that. There you go, it's got like three, three. Um, well they're expansions, I want to say like scenarios, but uh, you know, you got everything in the base box and then here you've got the defense of Frankfurt. Want to fight with your World at, 80, World at War 85 forces on maps of a real section of the folded gap near Frankfurt, West Germany? and adapted specifically for World at War 85 play. That's it, it's a module there, 16 maps. When the eight summer maps are configured in a specific pattern, they display a monster-sized fighting area northwest of Frankfurt, West Germany. When the eight winter versions are configured similarly, they show the same area, but any line of sight benefits are cultivated, terrain are gone. Oh yeah, because you know, snow, there's no corn and things like that. Uh, presenting an entirely different battle arena. The maps are also geomorphic and so fully compatible with any other map in the World War 85 series of games. Also included are the Battalion and Regimental Activation System, two monster scenarios for the maps, three added counter sheets, US, West German, and Soviet, added formation cards, and national unit tables. Whew, lots of stuff. Then Storm and Steel Second Wave. A uh, fast-paced action-packed novel of West German forces defending their country against Czech and Soviet invaders. This expansion is based on the action and forces of the novel. It adds uh, two new counter sheets, 60 formation cards, and three new maps to your World at War eight, yeah, 85 forces. Now you can fight using the platoons and batteries of the Czech army as they charge into southwest Germany, heading for the Rhine and the French border. You will also... Oh, so that was one thing I noticed. There's no French in here yet. That might come later. And I know people want Canadian forces at some point. So we'll just have to see what the, the future brings. Uh, and I lost where I was reading. So we'll look at this one. The Drive at Gießen is a campaign game for World at War 85 that allows the generation and play of a set of linked game scenarios depicting a Soviet division's drive across West German against NATO forces. Wow, that's a long sentence. The operational map depicts an area roughly from Eisenach. Oh, yeah, that's what I said. The old one was like Eisenbach, right? Folded Gap, Eisenbach. Anyway, um, each location representing a game area of two maps. Links between locations represent road connections and will regulate how many game formations uh, will be able to transit between boxes during each. Well, this looks interesting. I'll have to. I don't know what that means. I don't know. Then it's got a bonus. Oh, we already looked at that from the unboxing. It's got a utility marker sheet. Oh, yeah, more, more, I was just trying to think, admin type stuff, admin markers. So what, what does it come with? Over 500 counters. Almost as many counters as the base game. I had 600, over 600. You got a total of 22 geomorphic maps. These are 19, almost 20 by 14 inches. It's a little smaller. Uh, you get one 11 by 17 inch campaign map, three scenario and module books, you know, for each module, uh, formation cards, data cards, 145 formation cards, 139 data cards. All right, so let's shrink rip. Now, I don't want to guess as to anything that's in here because I, I don't want to be disappointed. When I unboxed the other game, I thought it'd have all the miniature data cards, but maybe these data cards are the data cards I was thinking about for miniatures to play. And I'll show you what that means when I get there. If it's there, I don't know, I hope it's there. Okay, here it comes. We ripped the plastic, now we're taking the box. I'm going to set that down here. Oof, yeah! Oh! Oh! Very excited about that. I'll show you why in a minute. I already told you why, but I'm excited to see these. All right. Oh, there's more of them. Oh, there's a bunch of these. Oh, man, I'm so excited. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll show you why here in a little bit. But, yeah, super excited. And, oh, my gosh. Oh, man. Look how many freaking maps there are. Oh, jeez. That is is a lot of maps. I don't know what you call that. 
What's the plural of maps? Like map and map is right? That's a lot. Oh man, look at that. That summer winter versions. Yeah, that is so many. That's hefty right there. Whoa. I would pull each of these out, but that's too many and they're tightly packed in here so nice that I, I don't want to unfold each of those. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that for the moment. I'm gonna set that aside. Alright, so more cards, right? Uh, here's all the formation cards. So we'll, they're cards. I'll open them just so you can kind of see them, but they're cards. I'm going to have to buy some card boxes. All right, but what else do we got in here? So we have the module and scenario rules for Storm and Steel Second Wave. You have the Drive on Giesen campaign system. We'll open these up here in a moment, but okay, that's cool. Let's, I saw something in there that caught my interest. The Defense of Frankfurt module and scenario rules. Because your base rules, you know, come in the base box. So this is anything special to this module. And then how you lay it out. That's a lot of maps. That That's all the maps. Whew. Yeah, I won't be able to play that one for you. <laughs> you know, it looks cool. I can't play that on my little table, though. Not going to happen. Drive to Giesen campaign map. Yep, that is awesome. This, this, I, okay, I'm just going to say, uh, Flames of War, the miniatures game, because I like miniatures. I don't like painting them, but I'll throw that out there. I like miniature games. They do some things like this where they have, like, campaigns, and they have these maps, and you track, like, win losses, and you can kind of see overall who wins. And, and I haven't read this system, but that's what this reminds me of. And that, to me, is, like, really, really cool because... When you play, you're having real impact on, you know, a series of games. It's not like you just play one game and say, okay, shake hands, go home. This gives you an opportunity to have an ongoing system uh, of battles and come up with, like, an overall commander victory thing. Like, this is really cool to me. So I'm already liking that a lot. Okay, then we got some national unit tables. United States, because we get some more. Ah, there it is, M1A1. So you get your 120 millimeter. Uh, so that one, because I don't know, I don't historically wise when the A2 came out, but uh, M1A1 was definitely an upgrade in firepower over the 105. 105 millimeter, I think, was a rifled. I don't think that was smoothbore. I think that was a rifled, and I don't think that that weapon platform performed as well as they want. Plus, it wasn't a compatible weapon system with uh, West German allies. And so we got, I think it was a, a Rheimtal, how you pronounce it? But that was the 120 millimeter smoothbore. Now, I don't know if they're using the exact same today, but that gave, at the time, compatibility. So when you had units over one, you got much more uh, increased firepower then you had compatibility with your host nations of you know ammo and stuff like that that I think it really expanded the operational capabilities of the Abrams so that's really cool that they got the M1A1 in here now those kind of rules probably are not represented in here but you know it doesn't need to be you have as much ammo as you need but I just think it's cool to see that uh, then you got M1 there as well yeah that's cool I like that color me happy. Oh, and I believe these are double-sided as well. So, boom, boom, close air support. What is that? Oh, F-111. Is that ours? Aardvark? Now, what do we got here? That one is, just says Alpha Jet CAS, but I can't tell the picture of what that one's supposed to be. I almost want to say a Harrier, but I can't tell for sure. Uh, I got a Jaguar, M110, self-propelled artillery, so what is this, West German stuff? Yep, West Germany. Your Leopard 1, they got some Leopard 2s, and I love Leopard 2s. I think Leopard 2s are a sexy tank, especially like the 2A5 and the A6s. Man, I love that uh, uh, fancy nose angle armor thing. I just wish they were not so flimsy in Armored Warfare, but I really love those tanks. As much as I like the Abrams, I think the Leopards are a smexy, smexy tank. 
All right, what do we got here? The Czechoslovakian Republic National Unit Table. I like that. It was a super dark blue. I like the color they chose for them. But they've got there some T80s, T55, T55. What do we got here? The a Hound, MI4 Hound, MiG-23 Close Air Support, Mine Plows. All right. Oh, another Drive to Giessen campaign map. So we got two campaign maps. Nice. Awesome. And again, I love the concept. Love the concept. You know, we're going to battle it out. Ooh, capture territory. That's cool. I love it. I love it. I don't even, I haven't even read the campaign rules, but I'm already excited just based on that picture. So these are single sided. Here is some more West Germans, some more Leopards, Lux, or Luck. Registered trademark. M110 SPA, Patton's Martyrs, Close Air Support, the Phantom. Yeah, F4, Gepards. Yeah, no F15s. Uh, I didn't look to see what the US had for close air support. Now that I'm curious, are they rocking F16s or what? Or A10s, right? Should be A10s. That's army support there. Uh, no, it's the F111, close air support. Hmm. And then Apaches and Cobras. Well, all right. I guess it doesn't matter. More Czechoslovakian. Storm and Steel second wave. Again, just filled with lots of lots of cool info. <sighs> These are uh, Storming the Gap Drive on Giessen. What is this? Sequence of play. This must be part of sequence of play for the uh, campaign rules. Yeah, I like that. You can plan strikes where people will fight on those maps. Oh, boy. That, like I said, so, so excited for that. But there's two. Yeah, so there's purple and red. So I guess there's NATO. Oh, okay. So there's probably the NATO planning map and an Axis power planning map and then sequence of play for the two players. Makes sense. All right, cool. That's even more exciting. Oh, man. Yeah, I forgot. They said there was like a 22 of these things. So more West Germany. Defense of Frankfurt unit chart. More Leopard 1s. It's all right. Leopard, Le Leopard 1 was okay. I like the Leopard 2 system better. Uh, let's see. What do we got here? Soviet Union. More stuff there. More Soviet Union National Table Defense of Frankfurt. So this is like by module. Oh, there's a lot there, because that's also Defense of Frankfurt. So Soviets had a lot of stuff coming in. The formation headquarter formation cards, those were double-sided as well. And what is this? More United States. Storming the Gap. Defense of Frankfurt. 113, I hate. I was an M113A2 driver in the Army. Not a fun experience. Although that one I did enjoy driving compared to the A1 that we started with. Because A1 had the lever steering. <sighs> Pulled, I hated that. Oh man, that was such a clunky system. And then the A2 had this nice kind of you know, steering wheel thing. That was high tech. I loved it. Alright, let's take a look at some counters here. Yeah. So I think these are some of your campaign ones, right? Where you plan your airstrikes, where battles are occurring. Cool, and then here, yeah, because that says, that's the drive for geese and counter sheets, that is the campaign. Utility counter sheet that they were talking about, more wrecks, because you're going to have some larger scenarios, probably with lots and lots of stuff. And then, flip them around, ah, the units. So here is the uh, storm and steel second wave counter sheet, and that one has two sheets, that's the front. Uh, that was the Czechoslovakian stuff. Oh, these are some face one way, some face the other. And of course, the double sided. And these, I'm surprised over all the counter sheets I've looked at, they all look centered really, really well. I haven't seen any cutoff info, so that's, I'm very happy with that. Some West German stuff there, more Soviet forces. This is the Defense of Frankfurt counter sheets. There's two there, so some more American. So, man, I, I'm telling you, so many, so many counters. This is awesome. I like that. An unimaginable amount of gaming 
to come your way. All right, so there you go. You got your counters, all of the play aids for that, and then the cards. Yeah, let's bring that down a little bit. And move that power out of the way. Sorry, unprofessional. And where did I hide the knife? All right, a little exacto. Actually, I think these had a nice way of opening. Yep. Okay, you're safe. And come on, come on, come on. I'm not sleeving these, by the way. Sleeve them? You want to sleeve them? But this has got like a thousand cards. No, well, it's not a thousand, but... Yeah, here's your unit formation cards. I just, I don't know, something about the design I just like. I can't tell you what, but I do enjoy. There's your Phantom. F4, close air support. Yep. Oh, that was something I didn't mention on the counters before. Some of you might have picked it up already. The vehicle counters have a picture of the vehicle. Everything else, all the soft unit stuff, is got NATO symbols, and I thought that's a nice way to help differentiate your armored units from soft units. So I just thought I'd mention that because I noticed on some of these cards they got pictures of your close air support. That's nice. Yeah, these are nice. I love the card. It's a simple design. It really stands out. I'm happy. I don't know what the numbers are for yet, but that's something I will learn as I learn the game. So there you go, your unit cards, and this is more unit cards. This one I'm gonna have to cut open. Cut. All right, y'all, what do we got? We got cards. Buckets of cards. Mailman's a coming. I think I ran out of stuff from the mailman to bring today. Yeah, look at that. Just a huge stack then of the unit formation cards. Fold, uh, well, oh, okay. Well, at least down in the corner, you kind of know what snare it goes to. There's your yeah, Aardvark F111. Let's see here. Uh, regiment. This is all part of Folda. Yeah. Necessary, yeah. There's a bunch here, but I do believe that there's the. In case you don't like the cards, I I like cards. I, I have some friends, they're they're very hardcore against anything that's not a counters when you're playing a counter system, so they they aren't impressed with the cards. So I'm just gonna stick them back here. Me, I'm totally cool with cards. So you get a whole bunch, a huge stack of unit activation cards. You got all your counters. You got all your play aids. The unit nation the national unit tables bunches of maps and then there was uh the little books there that we went through uh, and then here was this is the part i was excited for now i had thought that this would be in the base box it's not in the base box it's in the expansion these are the data cards for you to play with miniatures yes that is correct you can play this game with miniatures and it's got um, the hex value of the unit. It's also got the micro armor, which is the six millimeter, 15 millimeter, and 28. Two popular scales that you can adjust for is also 20 millimeter, 170 sec. Oh, that would go right here. 170 second scale. You can actually get a lot of plastic kits off of like Amazon or different websites really cheap the 20 millimeter scale or 170 second scale for like modern tanks and things like that is they're not expensive at all and you can get bunches of them 15 millimeter isn't too bad uh the thing though that i have with when you're talking like 28 and so on i'll have to check how these uh measurements work out in inches but sometimes the ranges are not realistic at all but because this is platoon level stuff this says HE has a range of four and a half inches. Since you're playing at platoon level, this might be a pretty good compromising way of doing scale. So your one vehicle might represent that platoon, and therefore your ranges will seem kind of abstracted. So this this might not be too bad. This might not be bad. Because I bought some 15 millimeter stuff for Team Yankee, which I don't really play, but I wanted to use this system. And this says two and a half inches for high explosive. Let's open this up and see what else these cards tell you. 
So you're not playing at the tactical levels that you would at, say, like, you know, Flames of War or their Team Yankee. This is platoon level, so I'm thinking it's going to be, you know, abstracted a bit. So what kind of information comes on here? Mm, okay. Try not to ruin any cards. So that was the first one it showed me was the M M I for a hound. Let's see. I'm wondering if we have a tank to look at. There's some blind. There we go. It was a mine plow, but here's like a tank. All right. So it's going to have. See what what I like too about the data card is um, this allows you to have like one data card out on the table. And then you have your miniatures out, and then you can actually use counters that come with the game to mark, you know, damage and things like that. And then this one unit, you don't have to have all of those unit national tables out. It's just right here on the card. So this one card represents all the T-72s you have, and you track the individual damage and things like that with your miniature. So there's your 113 ACAB Leopards. All right. Ooh, registered. Uh, the Leopard system. There's a Leopard 1. And then there, there's the stats range-wise. So again, the card, this will give you like the combat values on the card. But the thing that you needed is the range values for the different scales that you play on. So if you were playing like 10 millimeter, I know some people that play modern and 10. Uh, so the difference between eight, uh, eight inches for the micro armor and 18 inches and 15, you can just kind of guesstimate somewhere in there and say like maybe 12 inches for AP. You know, so you can kind of guesstimate some stuff with you and your, your opponent. Um, but 15, I do see a lot of people with 15. So that's cool. And then 28, that's a big scale. But man, those would be big tanks to have out on the table. They'd be, be pretty sizable. Let me, let me grab a 15. Alright, so here's my graveyard of... 15 modern now this doesn't even include my chieftains that's that's in another box uh, now that I have a whole lot here but you know some of these you got to have a lot of tanks I didn't even paint them all because <laughs> I don't like painting uh, but you know here's a here's a Abrams yeah I didn't buy any of the leopards but see this is the 15 millimeter scale and see that's that's what I was talking about when you do like tactical and it says this thing shoots 12 inches in a tactical game or 24. You know, sometimes it's like, man, the scales don't work well. And then if you can say that this thing could theoretically shoot all the way across the table for realism, this is big. It doesn't leave you a lot of maneuverability out on the table. So that's why when I want to do like modern, I think micro armor might be the way I go for modern. That way I can actually fit a bunch on the table and then... That's why I'm happy they've got the micro armor ranges there. So AP is 8 inches. See, this is 18 inches. So, you know, you go 18 inches out. You know, and it's like... If this was a tactical game, I'd be like, really? That You're saying my Abrams can really only shoot partway, a very small partway? But, if you convert this now to platoon level see now this is representing a platoon of tanks this is no longer tactical level those ranges can make sense now you can focus on maneuvering elements you're moving platoons around and that to me makes a lot more sense so I could that's why I was saying I wanted to see the ranges I can make that work but just just because I think I still want to move down to six millimeter because you can get a lot more tanks in 6mm. I got a friend, he's like, well, I think he was getting rid of all of his micro armor and he was moving to 15 actually. So I don't know, maybe I got to stick with 15 if I want to be compatible with all the cool kids. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's why I was really excited to see the data cards. So you can play the game using the exact same rules, but now you could use miniatures and put it on any type of tabletop location you want. You know, the, the battlefields at that point truly become unlimited. And there's three, three packs of these data cards. So super happy about that. But there you go. That's some of my thoughts there on the contents. And then that's the actual contents of the expansion box. 
So that is your data cards, you've got your formation unit cards, you have a huge amount of maps, you've got all of the um, player aids to support the modules, and it all fits inside this box quite well, actually. And it's quite heavy. A lot of good stuff in here. But that's it for the World at War 85 Storm in the Gap expansion pack. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Uh, please leave comments below on what you think of the system for yourself. And, uh, you know, hopefully. I might not get to play all of these for you on camera because some of them are going to need maps that take up more space than I have. But I am hoping to get you some, some gameplay. All right. Um, that's about all I can think of, really, to say. So we'll talk to you later. Thanks a lot. Bye.